you can hear when a guy is is a uh, when someone when a French guy beatboxing is beatboxing. I can tell it's French when a UK guy is beatboxing. Okay, he's from UK, you know. Bro, I'm so glad you said that. Killer, killer, podcast. Killer, killer, official. Dot com. THTC, the UK's leading ethical streetwear label. Organically grown and ethically built garments from hemp, organic cotton, and other sustainable materials. 2019 is their 20th anniversary year. Join me with THTC as a Killer Keller podcast sponsor celebrating music, social activism, hemp, and street culture. THTC, eco fashion redefined since 1999. 101.4 FM, 24 hours a day, all genres. Kinexfm.co.uk Box created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Killer Keller Podcast. Serves you right, reporting live from uh, central London or central as you need to be, but we're splitting the difference right here because we're going European. Um, I'm very, very lucky, very lucky indeed to not only have been a part of a big piece of a puzzle in beatboxing not only that but was able to create this organism that we all are part of and the leagues continue the levels they go up and i'm still a part of it and open with open arms the man's like the man's like i'm talking to today come on my show which is hugely flattering and awesome because he's a champion uh ladies and gentlemen from just shy of france close to switzerland right now we have the man french champion river inside the place what are we saying river what's up bro i'm super happy to be here thank you for the invitation bro i think i think uh, you're my first uh um zoom beatboxer so this is oh fun. okay that's pretty cool but you guys I'll are used that. to this shit, right? Because like I've seen so many battles online, it's ridiculous. Like you guys just go ham on Zoom. Yeah, definitely Zoom, uh, Skype, uh, Jitsi, everything. So much things. How's it feel to be? Because you know, I mean, you know, without showing too much of my age in a beatbox scene, I mean, I, I have to, I have to really hold my hand up and said, at a time when I was getting into beatboxing, there really wasn't this level of league table and battling you know i would be mm-hmm. judging here and there but it, you know what i mean like what's it like to be doing these kind of competitions online at the moment bro mm, uh, i'm first i'll say that uh it's uh at first i'm not at all an online guy uh i've been uh a lot of people, you know, begin with online discover uh, beatboxing with this and then go to to live events you know uh that's not my case at all i've i've never at the beginning i never enjoyed uh, that much uh online battles because it's something personal i was you know just uh i just wanted to to be on stage for, uh, at the very beginning even when i was very bad so i i always try to be on stage and not that much on like battling and uh and uh, i discovered it you know with uh, the situation where everything is cancelled everything every online event is cancelled and yeah. uh i still want to battle i still want to uh improve i still want to uh test my routines and uh what's left is online battling you know so yeah. since there were so much and uh, so many sick beatboxers were participating uh that's where i put in my energy and i can say it's really really uh it's uh another way of battling it's i'd say uh it's totally different because you know uh, at the beginning it's really weird when you use on stage because you adapt your routines for stage you know you use uh, subs and uh stuff that doesn't work that much online for example you have to readapt a little bit Mm-hmm. and uh you're in your room bro and it's like uh you have to get uh battle energy you have to to be like okay i'm gonna win this but technically you're in you you're uh, in your pajamas in your room and uh, with your <laughs> mic in front of your webcam you know, don't know what you're talking about don't know what you're t- <laughs> <laughs> and uh that's pretty that's pretty weird at the beginning 
but after you uh, when since you get into it it's like a really hype and uh, people uh, people did really a really amazing job with uh, organizing this uh, yeah. i'm going to big up my french bros the the french beatbox family beatbox france organized the, the uh, a championship with all the french speaking countries it was really cool because they uh, not only they did a, a, a battling, but they like, were like, uh, you know, uh, analysis of the battles after by Firebrass. They were like, uh, you know, interviews, uh, yeah. uh, a talk show between. That was really, really interesting. And they did something like uh, never saw on the online scene. Same thing with Black Cups, same thing with the International Throwdown, but throw Beatbox International, Big Up Triple Eight from UK. For real. For real, and, big up uh, Five Rise as well. That's my dog. All right? Yeah, I know. Me too. He's the... <laughs> and it came up from the same at the, around the same time, I think. Um, yeah, bro. Like, I find, and this this is quite the phenomenon, right? When people accept technology, the youth mm-hmm. gravitate towards it, and then all of a sudden, you get new stars. Yep. Do you definitely. Know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. The, you, we definitely can talk about uh, an online style in uh, in uh, beatboxing. Yeah, like uh, there's, a, it's almost an another scene. You know, I, I don't know what to say. It's yeah, uh, yeah. People, there, uh, it's still beatboxing. So everyone got uh, you know a, a base, uh, a common base, but they got uh, all uh, their. Uh, there's like different uh, codes uh, it's like okay uh, sounds that are used often uh and it's like uh and it's two different scenes you know the online scene and the live scenes and uh, yeah. the situation brought everyone together and it was so cool to watch and uh because uh, people had you know uh maybe uh, like me that i was not hating on on the uh, online ballerine i was like okay yeah that's cool you know and then i mm-hmm. realized it's it's really something uh, difficult and uh, something interesting you know you have to be yeah. super clean you have to be uh, you super have, clean uh, because of the compression it takes it, it, it adds so much air yeah when, you know exactly and you every single mi- little mistake you do uh in live it can pass because you're powerful or something here it's really you Every everyone everyone hears everything you do, so you have to be really really careful. That's right. It really makes you work on your details and stuff, and uh, and yeah, that's what I can say. Big up to yeah, the that's right. that's right. And you can't say too much about the battling, you know, when your when your uh, internet <laughs> your Ethernet cable is, has an address. <laughs> <laughs> we know where you live, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, man. Yo, it's so true. Uh, there's no room for error, is there? Like when you do something live and you're performing, you with the energy of the crowd and back and forth. Um, Vocoda, this mm-hmm. guy. Yep. He's one of the people that I would almost certainly, I wouldn't have heard of him if it wasn't for the live, live stream. Yep. Um, he's just one of many that I can, but off the head. Um, American Cat doing his thing. And my, I just, can't get over how deep like like you say the detail within things and i'm now thinking to myself is it just because we're online that we're hearing this or is it a case Mm. that they're technical on stage as well Mm. yeah i say no for having seen vocal on stage uh, a few times you have yeah yeah, so I saw him at uh, not that much on stage. In fact, I saw him like at the World Champs 2018 because he was qualified uh, a World Cup qualifier, and I saw him uh, at GBB. And I remember very well his uh, Elim at the at the World Championships. That was insane. That was crazy. I remember it really well. Mm-hmm. And um, and uh, yeah, definitely it works. Uh, what he does works on uh, on a stage, definitely. And online, so that's pretty hard to to uh, to achieve. In fact, I think mm-hmm. I think about LEC also from Canada, uh, who's uh-huh. uh, yeah the Canadian champion, uh, yeah, not yeah, current yeah. but Canadian He's champion. Crazy. He's, He's crazy. super crazy, and he comes yeah, yeah, from yeah. Uh, and he came from online battling. At least he did a lot of online battling, and uh, mm. he's super powerful on stage. Also, he's easily GBB Elim is so super sick. It's one of the sickest teams of GBB. Yeah, and um, 
and it works. The last, the last time we actually saw each other, with uh, in fact, we yep. probably saw each other before this, after this as well, a couple of times. But there's a there's a saying in boxing, and it's something that Mike Tyson said, <laughs> and uh, a uh, it what was it? It was a um, an an angry fighter is a happy fighter, <laughs> and there's something about the youthfulness of the, the battles at the moment, you know, mm -hmm. the, the freedom of, uh, of the sport in beatboxing. Okay. With you, dude, like, I remember when I first saw you battle live, and I was just like, you know, like, it, it, the future's safe. Do you know what I mean? Like, this young <laughs> cat is, like, fucking going. And I was just Thank like, you. yo, like, and and it just feels like you you put your you know your your piece of the puzzle in early of what you're contributing to the beatbox scene, but it feels like you've got so much more because you're angry and focused and you're young and you're do do do. You know what I mean? Wow. Okay. First, thank you so much, man. That's a lot of compliments. Uh, I know you mean it. Uh, I, I see you mean it, but uh, it means a lot to me, though, uh, that uh, someone like you says that. That's pretty crazy. It gives uh, a lot of energy to to work even more. And and oh, thank you, bro. My pleasure. <laughs> my pleasure, bro. And uh, you say that freedom. Uh, but, uh, no, uh, I think. What can I say that? Um, I'm. Uh, I'm a lucky guy, in fact, uh, in a lot of aspects. Uh, I won the, the French champs uh, like uh, really young. I wasn't expecting that. I was 19. And uh, and I wasn't, uh, how can I say? I was always improving, the working my beatboxing and stuff. But uh, I uh, I always put it like my, uh, my uh, without even thought, Thinking about it, my objectives were really high all the time. You know, I, I was always thinking about uh, achieving so what other crazy beatboxers did, and it was like almost natural. I was like, okay, I have to do this, I have to win this, 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 and it was like, oh, it's always in my head, mm -hmm. and uh, that's I never thought of, uh, you know, uh, just uh, chilling and maybe uh, compete one day or no, or no, no. I just, you know, wanted to go hard on it, and. Uh, what I'm doing now is uh, I try to put some uh, musical, I don't have this word, but uh, some musical stuff. I like some to, musicality uh, to it. Yeah. Yeah. I try to work with that. I think it's important, but in a technical way also. And uh, that's why I'm trying to work. Now I, I, try, I have to work my bases. I have to, I always got something to work. And maybe that's why you say, uh, you, you say uh, the future is safe or something. <laughs> Uh, I I think I uh, if I have to to uh, to analyze myself, uh, I think I always improve a little bit. Even if if I, my improvement is not like this all the time, you know, mm -hmm. I'm always improving a little bit and a little bit, and it's like kind of safely, and I can trust on me with that. That's what mm -hmm. I can say for sure. What's the what what inspires you, River? What's the what are the uh... For what are the first things that inspire you? You know, when you wake up in the morning and you're like, uh, that freedom is there again, and you're you're cooking breakfast or you're in the bathroom or you're going out to work. Yep. What, what inspires you? What triggers your mind to start beatboxing? To start beatboxing. Um... What triggers it in the morning? What's the thing that you're like? What inspires you? Hmm. Oh, that's a good question. I like uh, I like listening to music first. Uh, I'm listening to to a guy. Uh, I'm listening to a lot of French rap actually right now. The French rap scene is really crazy. Yeah, I'm hearing uh, it's crazy at the moment. Yeah, definitely, definitely. People are you know experimenting a lot and super interesting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes when I'm not inspired, I simply watch videos, my favorite battles or uh, my favorite uh, beatbox videos. Think about the uh, spider horse, the full cycle cycle video. I don't know if you, if you see. Is uh, they're here and uh, there are uh, mm, 
projects uh, projections of uh, Miyazaki movies. I think it's uh, Nausicaa and uh, Akira. It's not Miyazaki, but Akira. And uh, and the video is super sick, and the routine is incredible. Wow, I need to check uh, that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll send it to you, man. It's one of my favorite beatbox videos. It's so it's insane. And uh, send it to me. Send it to me. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. And, uh, How often do you watch battles? How do you watch battles a lot? Is it is this a is this a thing where you listen to someone else and you're like, yo, I'm I'm going to take what they do, but then I'm going to twist it? Mm, yeah, definitely. I uh, I listen to a lot of battles. I try not to 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 copy directly. Uh, I've been copying a lot because we all did, you know. I think, I think there's uh, a period when everyone did. I yeah. mean, it, it, for for sure, people are just coming out of that now. I think. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. At the beginning, you kind of you can come from nowhere so uh, you know you have to you have to copy i don't know uh, i i i assume when you, be, you when you began you copied like uh, Razel, kenny muhammad uh, yeah, man. His mark. yeah man like i would never have confessed it back in the day but like Razel had a hold on the scene because he was doing the beat and singing at the same time and i mean i i had already been doing the sounds that he had like i was already doing them but but he just gave me the opportunity for to make them more clearer that yeah. was what it was and again it That's just goes so cool. back to the life thing doesn't it it's like you do learn a lot by being on stage and and doing it right mm. yeah definitely now uh the the result is so important man it's so crazy and uh so crazy. <laughs> but that and, but now you, like you say it's come out of this situation now where there's not so much like bro like there's some crazy heads i cut you know the, the list is like mad and some of the sounds they're like super unique to the point where it's like, yeah, has anybody got any more room in their mouths? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Always, you know, and you, it's never over. That's the crazy thing. Crazy. It's like you, uh, every, every GBB, uh, GBB is like every year. So it's like, uh, you see, uh, what, what the, what the beatboxing is giving at the moment, you know? So that's super, super exciting. And Mad. I remember the first time I went to GBB in 2016, everyone was like, yo, this is the end. Nobody can get better. That's, that's too insane. And then next year, everyone is better and better and better all the time. And uh, some new sounds are coming, some new crazy beatboxes with new visions of it. And mm. that's so, that's endless, you know, that's endless. And Especially uh, now with the, the Wi-Fi being the main, you know, component to these battles, that's like, like you say, it's a whole scene in itself now. Yeah, definitely. And it's really, really interesting to watch, you know. Uh, they, have, yeah. they have really cool approaches of sounds and, uh, and, uh, and some of them, uh, not, not all of them, I think, but uh, because that's kind of the, the, the problem of uh, some of the beatboxers online is sometimes they come on stage and they don't sound that that uh, that good on the stage, uh, unfortunately, because they're not used to be on the stage. Mm. But uh, but uh, that's not that's true for some. That's true for that's not true for uh, for uh, for others. We who know to handle a microphone and uh, know to to go super hard with it, and are yeah. cool and are cool good in both. Oh, I'm almost out of battery. Just two seconds. Yeah, yeah, sure. We're going for a short beatbox interval here. <laughs> what are you using? Are you using sound card? Um, uh, you you mean my installation? Yeah. Yeah, I'm using. Wait, I'm gonna show you. Yeah, show me what you use because obviously you do a lot lot of the battles online. I'll I'll be very intrigued to see what you're using. Yeah, it's not. It's my it's my RC505. We're just here. Oh shit! OG is, OG business. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. It is Standard. connected. Yeah. It is connected uh, directly simply to my microphone, and uh, and I did uh, all my battles like this. I got a little EQ, a little reverb and stuff. Has it got like a preamp in it? Um, it- it's yeah, it's, it's work. It, it can work like a sound card. It's uh, it's that's pretty interesting. crazy. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah, there's a sound card integrated in it, so it's pretty. That's pretty cool. I recorded the videos with about that. It, though, the only thing about it, though, is it's a little brittle. It's like, it's not very transportable, is it? It breaks. Uh, the RC505, you mean? Yeah. Mm, uh, you have in to really what situation? In what situation, you mean? In a, like like on a plane or a train? or? Ah, uh, at, 
that's pretty fine. It's like, you know, this large and you can, uh, you just have to be careful because uh, this is really fragile, fragile, yeah. like yeah. this. That's it's it. not yeah, that yeah, yeah, this exactly. one is broken. And, uh, but it's, no, it's pretty, it's not that heavy. It's, uh, and uh, you can even, uh, I know some loopers uh, uh, repeat their routines on the train and stuff. So, really, they practice yeah. on the train? Yeah, yeah. Ritmine works is a lot of GBB in trains and stuff because it was touring with Barry Warm. I saw stories. And, uh, like, bro, like I said, this is like one of the few time, rare times because, you know, I've had a lot of beatboxers on, but I, I feel like there's a lot more expansion to talk about stuff with you because uh, you're of a new generation. And what what i'm finding interesting well actually let, let me let me simplify mm -hmm. um i understand but not a lot of people outside of beatboxing would understand so i need mm -hmm. to get into like some of the details here about like how your mind works in situations all right okay because it's a street everything. culture show so we need to get into this yeah of course so with this with this in mind how habitual how how much of a habit would you say it was that people would be on a train with the loop pedals doing doing it is it is it like out of habit it's like i need to do it mm, no i don't i don't think so uh, it, it depends uh in the case of uh of Ritmine, big up to Ritmine, by the way we are big up to bear mm. um they uh he was uh, working for GBB and he was touring a lot with his group, you know, so he had to, uh, when he had, you know, a single moment of, uh, I imagine, you know, I, I assumed it, I just saw, I just saw him, you know, working on the train in, uh, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So I suppose, I suppose he had not that much time, you know, in his home or, in, and he was just, you know, uh, he's just, you know, repeating his routines for GBB like this. And, uh, and I know a lot of beatboxers, uh, a lot of loopers do that because uh, because it works and uh, and uh, and you know travel can be a super uh, it's a it's a we as beatbox as a beatboxers and I know what I'm talking about I I think I uh, I spent like uh, me half of my uh, beatbox years uh, in trains and buses and uh, you know mm. then then uh, I, don't, I don't know what to say. A lot, a lot of hours, you know, uh, in night buses uh, with a baby crying uh, and uh, and uh, no heat, just like this, you know. Oh man, and, uh, <laughs> I know that feeling, bro. <laughs> it sucks as shit. Just to go to the other side of France, you know, uh, yeah. to just to watch a battle, and and mm. that's what be what's so beautiful about beatboxing. And I see a lot of people doing the same thing, you know, uh, coming just really a. Uh, not interested about uh, any just just for the passion you know they're going yeah, sure. uh, and what uh, that's what we have in france uh, i'm, I'm uh, divagating a little bit so i'm sorry no no not but, at all uh, not at all you're, it's your podcast brother you keep going <laughs> okay uh so um no that's uh something we got uh we got in france it's like uh people got a lot of energy to to travel uh when there's an event, you know, even even it's, it's if it's like in the other side of France, you you can be sure uh, you can be sure a lot of people from all the cities are gonna come because mm -hmm. they they want to support and they want even if we're, they're not participating, just to chill and watch. And that's what makes uh, the French community uh, strong, I think, a little bit. You guys are vicious, like the French scene to me. You know, going going way back. You know, you've you've always been like aggressive. Uh, it's mm -hmm. it's actually crazy you know what i mm. mean like how committed you guys are to the cause um and i think what makes the whole beatbox thing even more viral is yeah. not only because it's now spread entirely online but uh there's no there's no real language barrier like no even what we were talking about razel earlier there was a limitation to the fact that he was singing in english mm -hmm. or, and and other things i think hip-hop at that time was and to, and to a degree still is the dominant uh player in in street culture things like graffiti and beatboxing mm. you know yeah but but it made it harder for people outside of 
Western world to get into it. Okay. But yeah, you now you've it. got China, and China's like taking over the world, and you know, Korea yeah. and Asia like going crazy. Yeah, definitely. The Asian scene is crazy. It's a whole other planet. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, you got, uh, yeah, definitely. Korea in, in particular is killing it, giving, giving out all the time so crazy, uh, some crazy beatboxers. And uh, you got the Korean style, you know, and, uh, and the Chinese styles uh, a little bit also. And, uh, and that's really, really cool to watch. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, it's really, it's really interesting. And uh, it comes, uh, I don't know what to say. Mm. Mm. Ah, sorry for my English. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. You, you go, you're very, very good at beatboxing. So you're excused for your English. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. I take that. Yeah. No, we're, we're talking, no, we were talking early, early about the French scene. Uh, mm. you, you told the... Uh, you told some really cool stuff about it. It means a lot. And uh, yeah, I want to shout out to you, the UK scene also, bro. You you guys are crazy. And agree. And you you are the guys. Uh, you you got some aggressive beatboxers on stage also. Some really cool battlers. Yeah. 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 yeah think the, about the, the, Rips yeah. One when he was battling Dilo also. Right now, Dilo for me is the unbeatable guy right now. Uh, Dilo, like Dilo. You know when you're doing something right, when you have your own fan page. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, he doesn't even post half the things other people do. Mm. It, yeah, he's been on the podcast and he, he's a pleasure to talk to. He thinks a lot. Um, mm. and Yeah, I saw, the, I saw the podcast, bro. Yeah, man. He, yeah. He's deep. He's deep. Um, right, let's, uh, let's cut to the chase. Favorite mm -hmm. sound you do and what was the hardest thing? Uh, favorite sound to do my favorite sound yeah 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 that's an interesting it's... snare Look, that shit's interesting because that's very new school yeah yeah definitely and uh I, I say definitely because a lot of people began to use it uh i don't think it's because of me i think it's like a, a general thing with the uh, food box and uh, so rough life from indonesia who, who used it a lot yeah. And uh, yeah, it's definitely new school. It's like, you know, there are periods where, you know, liberals are uh, hype and uh, and soccer punches are hype. Uh, and then, yeah. uh, and then uh, a lot of people begin to do speed snares, roll, rolls with it. Not only using it with this, like a snare, but using it like a whole, um, like, uh, like definitely a sound, you know, rolling it, uh, putting, uh, doing combos with it, intricating it with other sounds. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, yeah, that's definitely a new school sound. Yeah. 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 The, 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 um, the other thing as well is the influences of this, of where, of what you do with the sounds. Um, it, it's you, a lot of people go down that more trappy dubstep sound mm -hmm. and, and, and understand why it's to get more sounds out of the beat pattern because there's a lot more space mm. to be adding fills and silences and big noises so i'm noticing that i'm noticing that the because of that the refinement on the individual sounds mm. is becoming a lot more tighter mm. I, I didn't understand man can you repeat I'm sorry. Um, what i mean is what i mean is if you're doing like a dubstep tempo yeah or a trap tempo you've got a lot more space within ah, okay. the rhythm to add more sound right to add to add sounds okay you understand and but what, yes. what's happening but what's happening is those sounds are getting super refined mm. now because there's so much space with them like each one's got to be super detailed right okay ah, that's really a really interesting thing you said oh i, I never thought of it like this mm. Yeah, probably, probably. Now you, you know, now that you say it, um, but people still do, still do. Um, <clears throat> that's uh, yeah, that's why people enjoy a lot of speed snare because uh, it's uh, it's such a cool sound and uh, it's really easy to do uh, when, when you know when you know to do it. It's like super. Um, it doesn't. You don't need air. You can uh, do humming stuff with it. 
yeah, you can sure. uh, you can roll it you can do a lot of things and uh where i'm a lucky guy is that mine is really super high and uh, yeah. i i don't force it i it just comes uh, comes uh, comes like this and uh, that's just pure luck in fact and uh, that's why you can use it like a sound putting putting voice with it putting uh, and uh, and bringing it in another uh, in uh, in other ways i think yeah for sure with um, with a snare i'm a yeah. big snare fan right I'd. And like, yeah, man, like, Me too. I'm so glad you said that that was your favorite sound. <laughs> <laughs> like, when I hear a snare, it's got to be right. It's got to be in key. It's got to be in pitch. Yeah. Because it changes the whole, it's, 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 it's imp important as a bass note. It's the, clar it's the cut between the sound, right? So um, the only thing I will say with with that snare and I, i'm yet to hear someone do it with clarity is when you're adding a vocal with that snare mm. it it gets in the way because obviously your lips are shut right yeah 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 i wanna what do you mean when i add a vocal with my snare what happens well like not your snare specifically but mm -hmm. a snare like that where mm -hmm. it's high it's like super high r raspberry pitch sounding mm -hmm. and it makes it hard to get any other you can get the bass line out with the hum mm -hmm. but if you were to kind of talk with it or sing with it it, it obstructs ah yes if you want to articulate words it's, it's kind of complicated yeah um what i can do i can show you a little bit if you want what i can sure. do is uh, <laughs> um first you get the speed snare okay which sounds really high that's that's a Fun sick fact. snare though in fact, it sounds, uh, it's the morning now for me, so it sounds really high, and then uh, it, uh, the, the quality lows uh, in, the, in the day, and uh, mm -hmm. in the day sometimes it doesn't sound like this. I don't know why, but... Nice. <laughs> so you, uh, you were in the morning, so we're lucky. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I got this. I'll edit that bit out, so it's like that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you lucky guy. No, so what I do is like, here okay what i do after is i use my lungs i roll with it i, I roll it uh like uh i uh push out air uh like uh, i put a lot of pressure on my lips so it's like <laughs> and then after what uh what i do is like uh i like to the songs that come and go i like uh uh i like to um to uh, to make it uh you know uh uh begin begin uh begin low then make it high mm. put some put some put some oh put some oh with it like mm. <laughs> i get you that's uh how i work with it i and, get you uh, entirely yeah i get you entirely and that's what uh i can put some cool dynamics with it in a in a bit you know it's like coming and going. That's super important for me in a bit. Creates the dynamics of low yeah. and high and yeah. mid. Yeah. For me, it's all. It's almost. Uh, no, it's not almost. It's a criteria for me uh, to determine if uh, if a person is uh, is a good beatboxer or not. You know, it's like super important. Like uh, I'm gonna take a UK guy because I, I think about him directly. Uh, Bolzi, for example. Mm -hmm. uh he's crazy with his dynamics especially with the snares uh yeah i remember i remember at the french champs 2016 he did a crazy showcase and uh i, I remember all my life i was like sitting uh, in front uh, in front of him watching Bozy. i was like ah, this is Bozy, this is crazy yeah. Yeah. and uh he just did like to you know to sound check the mic like <laughs> like yeah. just to kick a uh, hi-hatted snare you know no, nothing uh, crazy uh, when you hear it like this and everyone was like mm. like everyone began to because it was so clean make yeah no, industrial it, it's, it, it's industrial sounding yeah it's insane and you know the way it works with the snares like you can put it high put it low you get mm -hmm. i don't know how many types you can really modulate it sounds work uh you can choose the volume you know because uh everyone a lot of people want to go hide directly you know 
mm-hmm. uh, when it comes to battling, go uh, be super powerful. Be, but uh, f- it for me it's cool. But when you uh, when you can uh, ach- manage to uh, control your sounds uh, to be super clean and uh, and uh, control, uh, you know, mix your beatbox, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, say like okay, this hi hat is gonna be a little bit lower, so it's gonna sound better in the in the whole uh, all the in the whole routine. Then for me, it's like uh, it's it's super important for and when I hear it, I'm really happy because it's kind of rare and in the in the in the beatbox uh, scene at the begin at the at the end, you know. I don't know if it's mm-hmm. rare, but uh, at least when I'm when I hear it, I'm really happy and uh, and. Uh, and for me, it's almost yeah criteria. It's something I listen a lot uh, to. I'm I'm really um, attention it with it when I listen to a beatboxer. I get you. I'm not sure if it's rare. I tell you what, I think it might be. No, it's okay. because I definitely fall prey to this myself mm-hmm. because I have a good dynamic range. Yeah. Right. Yes. But but here's the thing, right? I don't. I don't know what value that dynamic range. Uh, I don't know what benefits to an audience that perhaps are only really waiting for a bass drop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel you, man. <laughs> I feel you so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I know musicality and yeah. everybody in the scene stresses, we want musicality but you don't <laughs> yeah i mean it's like there is total musicality within the beatboxes that are in there but you have to perform to the audience right yeah definitely and uh yeah that's uh, i feel you so much man like uh uh it's uh it's uh kind of cr- it's like on the um, it's the viral scene also that makes that you know Mm-hmm. And uh, at the beginning, I was like, yeah, everyone watch does it, would, uh, just wants only bass drops. Nobody listens to the D stairs and, uh, and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, w- when I was 17, you know, and, uh, and uh, young and uh, a little bit stupid. But uh, now that I've evolved and uh, that I uh, watched a lot, a lot of beatboxing, um, what I see is that the battle scene may forces you to be... Uh, to to know to know how to do everything you know mm. and uh, that's that's the main key uh, to to not only to win battles but to be a, simply a complete beatboxer it's just like uh you have you you can be the, for example we take the TBB champion you know Dilo mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. for me it's, it's a good example example of a perfect balance between uh, all the beatbox styles you know because yeah. he sings really well, uh, yeah. he got uh, some dope musical routines, but uh, he got some heavy bass drops, uh, and uh, it's not uh, it's not like uh, you know he sings a little bit and then uh, the bass drops comes out from nowhere. You know, it's like super logical the way he brings it. Logical, and, uh, so true. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like uh, it's it's made to be, to be there. Uh, he uh, he managed it to to be logical and. Uh, and uh, he got also some sick technicality. He doesn't show it that much. He, yeah, he shows it, but uh, he's, he, when you, he, I heard him freestyling a little bit and uh, on um, so in some online events and stuff, mm-hmm. I could really listen to what he did. And he got some really, really crazy patterns and stuff that he doesn't show that much, in fact, you know. And he's yeah, no. a little bit of everything and uh, he can manage to do, uh, to do something logical. And uh, you were saying like, uh, yeah, uh, people are waiting for bass drops. And uh, and as a battler and as a beatboxer, you got to understand that because as a person in the public, I want also bass drops. I want to be like, whoa, in most beats and stuff. And um, uh, you got to, to have this in mind, let's satisfy the audience. And also, you know, uh, bring uh, your universe, bring uh, your... Uh, your uh, your personal energy uh your uh, musicality maybe what you what you want to what you want to personally bring you know and uh, i think that's the main goal it's really hard to achieve i'm really mm. from from that or uh, but uh yeah that's that's what i want to do definitely yeah i think i think you've hit the nail on the head 
it's almost like uh, pleasing the audience, but making sure that the judges know that there's integrity mm. to what you are as an individual. Yep. It's about showing your influences, but without replicating the same path. It's a, it's such a fine line. It's and and it's an exciting place to be. Mm, definitely, it, it's like crazy. It's like crazy, especially when you're dealing with some countries out there that mm-hmm. are putting on beatbox events online and offline that don't have any historical reference points. Mm, in beatboxing, you mean? Yeah. Mm, what do in what uh, in what what countries are you thinking about, for example? Like for instance, Korea. Yeah. Like they don't they 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 didn't grow up in western culture mm-hmm. until they saw it on the internet. Mm, okay. To a degree, to a degree, like some of the most technical beatboxers out there are technical because of generations and generations of passing information. Yep. But they get this like ready formed culture and they just create something completely wild with it it's incredible it's that's crazy. hip-hop man that's hip-hop yeah. you know everyone can take it and appropriate uh, and For make real. it uh, make it his you know as a as a culture as a people and that's what uh, what is beautiful about it you know and uh, yeah. and uh, everyone brings his touch already you know you can uh, if you're really into beatboxing you can you can uh, mm, It depends because uh, I think uh, back in the days it was like more evident uh, because uh, there was not that much uh, the influence of the internet scene. Uh, the mm. well, the internet did something like a, a little bit of uniformization, you know. Yeah, uh, for sure. A, a lot, uh, a lot of people use the same sounds, use uh, you know the same uh, ways to to build routines and stuff. Yeah, um, for sure. But uh, how can I say that? Uh, yeah, the the schools. Uh, I I think like maybe in uh, at when Fiabra started, or uh, you know, uh, at the artifice moment, you mm. know, at the rise of the of the French uh, of the French uh, of the French beatboxing and uh, also the rise of UK beatboxing. For me, it's like two schools, you know, French UK beatboxing. There are the two uh, the two main main schools of beatboxing, you know. Mm, One, uh, for sure. And uh, you you can hear when a guy is is a uh, when someone when a French guy beatboxing is beatboxing. I can tell it's French when a UK guy is beatboxing. Get it's from UK, you know. Bro, I'm so glad you said that. It's so fucking true. <laughs> When I It's, hear when he collapse, when I hear collapse beatbox, I can hear him. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's like you can tell, and it ain't It's that so French. <laughs> It's so French. Collapse is like yeah. <laughs> his beatbox is so French. Yeah, yeah, and it's not his mustache neither. It's like, no. <laughs> it's like um, what was I going to say? Uh, how old were you when you first started uh, beatboxing? Mm. Well, uh, I discovered beatboxing, uh, like uh, a friend of mine showed me some videos at the beginning. I remember I saw uh, Alan versus Killer, uh, mm. the, the finals, you know, I was like, wow, I'm going crazy with it. I was judging that one. That shit was crazy. Mad. That's so cool, man. You were judging the <laughs> 2012. Yeah. Yeah, man, I imagine. I w- would have paid so much to be there. You judge Rips once Killer. Yeah, judge that. Yeah, yeah. For who did you vote? Just to just to know. Uh, if you remember? I can't remember. I mean, I was <laughs> I'd had a I had a few too many drinks by that time. But um, I think I probably <laughs> I think I probably went for Reaps at the time. If I'm honest. Okay, okay. Because it, I li- it was I, a I, I've, been, two, I've been a, I've been championing Reaps. I, I just love his whole embodiment on the thing. You know what I mean? Mm. Sorry, carry yeah, on understand. as you were. Sorry. No, 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 of course. Uh, what was I saying? I'm really sorry. Uh, so 2012. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I was watching. Uh, I was watching uh, the World Finals. Like uh, this was uh, like maybe I was like maybe 13, 14, um, and then I began to uh, to beatbox a little bit. 
like uh, but nothing really crazy i remember one uh i was watching uh you know i just put a beatbox on youtube and i i saw the the videos i was watching so joseph pulpo i remember watching eclipse you know the medley the hip-hop medley oh i remember God. watching marcus perez man when he was on viney and i was like wow that's the sickest beatboxer ever and stuff and in fact he's really he's really he got some really cool stuff you know his bass is really uh is really clean and uh, and uh, at the end he's really cool what he does And after uh, the first time I, time I witnessed beatbox in live was uh, in my hometown here in Nancy, and uh, it was a rap concert. And in the first uh, two beatboxers were opening, and uh, there was Kemart and uh, Speaker B. I don't know if you see those two guys. Oh, no. Um, Kemart is. Um, Uh, he had dreadlocks back in the days. He's a guy from Switzerland, the Swiss champ. Oh, that rings bells. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I d- yeah, sure, I do know. I'm sure I do. So uh, basically, we are near from. Uh, I'm really near from Switzerland. So so he, he, ca- he came a little bit to beatbox there. And uh, mm-hmm. Speaker B also, who is a uh, who's the tag team of Kemart, it's like Onisan. They're uh, they're uh, they're a tag team, the Swiss tag team strength champions. Sick. So they are the first guys I ever witnessed live, and I was like going crazy. Uh, I remember it. I remember it really well. And yeah. they always uh, after uh, I came, I came to talk to them, uh, and uh, and they always been really supportive. And then uh, after uh, after that, I was you know beatboxing a little bit from my uh, in my room or uh, at school. I was uh, and more and more I was beatboxing all the time, all the time, all the time, mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. And um, I was uh, I I sent a wall card for the French Champs of 2016. I was still in high school, and uh, that's uh, crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I love you, that. You know what's crazy, bro? I was there are 40 uh, 40 um, uh, wall cards that are, that are taken for the French Champs. You know, and my wow. video ranked 42 on 40. So, wow. uh, so I was, uh, I was really close, but I, had, uh, I thought I didn't get, go through it, you know, and, mm. uh, I was still going to go, you know, to watch, but I was like, okay, you know, worries. I was not, uh, at all. Uh, I was, uh, not, uh, confused or something. I was just, okay, let's, uh, yeah, I'm not passing. It's fine. Mm. And, uh, mm. three days after three days before the, the, the French champs, uh, I received a call from an unknown, uh, uh number. And it's right. Tico, you know Tico from Under Control, who organizes yes, yes, the yeah. he organizes the the French Champs now. Uh, That's right. He, uh, back in the days, now it's not he, him anymore. He's still uh, helping, but anyway. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, he t- he says to me like, uh, "Yo, bro, uh, two people couldn't make it. Uh, two couldn't make it uh, to the to the French Champs. So uh, two spots uh, are gone. So you are uh, you're the forty forty wild card you know and i was oh, thinking so sick yeah and i was like yeah in my high school i remember that was super crazy and uh and all the I girls went, were coming around you and just yeah. got crazy <laughs> got yeah definitely star. that's not true at all that doesn't work <laughs> <laughs> the, the, well beatboxing helps a little bit but no nah, not that but yeah. uh <laughs> yeah being on stage and stuff <laughs> <laughs> but uh i remember i went i was uh, my mom was in the room because she was in paris we went to both in paris and um and uh i went just uh after firebras so uh imagine the pressure when you're like uh it's your first time on a, in the french champs and uh yeah And the uh, fire brass just kills it, and uh, you have to go. I was really, I was not that good, you know. I was really. The I, I rewatched the Elim. It can't be. Uh, I think I'll post it one day uh, so we all can have a good laugh and uh, and see uh, <laughs> how, how, how mediocre was that. But at the beginning, it's like uh, it's like uh, you know an Elim of a young beatboxers, and and I'm and I'm kind of even proud of it, you know. Like I went to the French champs and I did it, and I was in high school. And mm. that's pretty cool. And then, There's something really cool about when you hear about young, young people, and especially having gone through it myself, 
just taking opportunity and figuring figuring things out mm. yeah I, I don't know man i just i don't even know why i sent a wild card that was uh following the scene but uh, i think i always wanted to compete but uh at this time i didn't took it that much seriously and mm. uh and uh then after after the friendship in 2016 uh i discovered the community you know uh I've been able to talk to everyone to 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 see everyone. Mm. And uh oh bro, I, that's not the yeah, I did uh, that was the first time I I went on stage on a beatbox battle, but I went to the GBB 2016 to watch with my dad. We still we slept in the we slept in the, in the car and stuff, I remember. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is he a fan really? of it? Does he like this Does your family like no boxing? not even not even that much but uh, he just did it for me that was pretty cool big up yeah, dad yeah. i love you for sure. <laughs> for sure and uh and yeah after after the after this you know after the, all this uh this stuff uh i had uh, a lot of time in my uh, in my life and uh, i just began to to watch every single beatbox video on the internet and practicing and practicing and I little loved a lot of battlings uh, everywhere in France and and uh, after uh, I'm not going to say anything uh, everything because I really did a lot of battles in France I really uh, a lot of little battles mm. a lot of um, even there's uh, an association called grow, grow up in the, in the north of France uh, who does like um, who takes beatboxing like uh, mm. and mixes it uh, with another discipline it's like uh and makes battles with it it's like beatbox and something and it's tag teams so it's wow. like uh, i did a uh, beatbox and rap beatbox and dance and beatbox and an instrument it's That's like it. uh to, to, i'm just gonna explain really quickly it's like hate because it's a really good experience uh, it was really good experiences all the time it's like eight uh, musicians or dancers you know are uh, come yeah. eight beatboxers come uh, it's like the morning. Uh, they uh, they they do random tag teams. You know, people don't know each other. Mm -hmm. uh, all the afternoon, uh, uh, they they got uh, a, a place to practice to uh, to 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 make uh, you know rounds of battling. Yeah. And the night uh, they present what they do. It's like uh, the battles are seated and stuff. And uh, it's like a championship, but uh, instead of just beatboxing, it's with uh, an instrument or with a dance or with dancer or with or with a rapper, and that's a really that's really cool concept. It must keep you extremely sharp mm. to be freestyling in rounds with other with other artists mm. that are completely different to you. Definitely, it's really interesting. Even if it's not uh, uh, dancing, has been really interesting. You have to, uh, it's uh, you have to follow the guy. You know, you have to. Uh, it's not. Uh, it makes you humble, in fact, because uh, you know when you're uh, alone on uh, on stage, you can only count on your beatbox skills. And uh, if you're prepared, that's pretty cool. You know, you 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 can uh, be kind of sure. But when you you are with a musician or with a dancer or with a rapper you yeah. have to count with the with the synergy between between you, you between you two and uh, and uh, you have to uh, uh, erase a little bit of your ego to uh, yeah. put uh, you in the service of the duo and it's really interesting that works with tag teams with beatboxers too also yeah also. i was just gonna say because i've seen you guys get down i've seen online too many times and you know been privy to like the beatbox camp and whatnot i think mm -hmm. that was the last time when i saw everyone at the same place me too man um yeah what's the mm -hmm. what's what's your uh who's the favorite person that you like to tag team and battle with in the beatbox world mm. <laughs> well good I, that's uh, not an obvious question is it <laughs> <laughs> No, I I think uh, well, uh, I got the chance to be in tag team with Collapse, so I say Collapse because yeah. it's uh, it's pretty cool already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, I really enjoy working with Collapse. Uh, it's a really really uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, he's he's pretty bad. He just began like uh, beatboxing like two months ago, 
and uh, and yeah, he's a pretty cool beatboxer. He got some cool stuff like quickly, but it's okay. Oh, collapsed, him. collapsed. <laughs> Learned beatboxing. No, I'm, jo- I'm joking. I'm joking. I was gonna say, I was like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Of course, I'm joking. But uh, <laughs> no, he began. I, he's he's been in the scene in uh, since like 2011, 2012, something like that. Mm. And uh, it's really, really cool to work with him. Uh, but you mean my dream tag team, like uh, so? Yeah, sure. So, yeah, f- that's that's really that's really hard. Um, there's just so much. There's so many. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say, man, mm, like uh, I'd I'd love to make a sick beatbox routine, like uh, with Tom Dum, like. Uh, you know, so you know a four-minute track to with Tom Dum. Yeah, people sleep on Tom Dum, man. Ah, yeah. I don't know if they sleep on him. Yeah, everyone knows he's super sick, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't know if he slept on. I. I hope not. But uh, I just feel like I just feel like if people were to talk about their top five, I don't understand why Tom Fun wouldn't be in it. That's really, really true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> yes. You know, when we're talking about Hall of Famers, you know, he came up with, me and him are pretty much the same age. We came up the same time pretty much. Yes. Okay. But, and, uh, but, yeah. Yes, it's too, it's too much. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, and he brings beatboxing in, uh, no, no, yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely my top five. Now that you say it, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, he's he. I'd love to collab with him. I mean, I've I've, I've collabed with him over the bar, <laughs> but I haven't collabed <laughs> with him like on the mic or anything. Uh, That's a good ever. start. Yeah, it's a start. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of people but, um, start with that. Yeah, for sure. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, big shout out Tom Farm all day, definitely. definitely. Yeah, or uh, I'd love to do something with every fourteen also, but uh, it's it's not a dream. I, I think it will happen one of these days. Because uh, he's in France and uh, we we know each other a lot, and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, man, beatboxing is so crazy because you know uh, I don't know when when you're a when you're a fan of um, of any other any other genre. I don't know if beatboxing is not a genre technically, but admitting if you're a fan of you know big stars, uh, Hollywood stars, or you know. Uh, or uh, crazy rappers. Uh, I'm a fan of crazy rappers, but uh, how can I say that? It's really hard. Uh, you you can never imagine to throw a party with them and just chill and talk uh, and uh, become friends with the, with them. You know, uh, I'm a yeah, really sure. big fan of uh, of my friends. In fact, uh, when I chill in friends and uh, I'm with uh, I'm with the guys, uh, I'm with the guys. I'm with Alexinio. I'm with Kim. I'm with them before mm. 14. You know, just uh, chilling. It's like uh, they're my friends, but I'm also super fan of them, and it's and it's so fucking crazy. In fact, that I'm hanging out, that that I'm even talking to you, man. That's super insane. If if uh, the 13 year old me uh, in his room beatboxing would uh, would have told me that uh, I'd be on a podcast with Killa Killa right now, he would have gone insane. No, that's super cool. That's what's Less that's beautiful. Rough. That's Honestly, beautiful. Bro, it's poetic. It's like the way it should be. Um, one thing I love about the yep. beatboxing. And I talked to, uh, who was I talking to about it? Maybe it was Thomas or Reaps anyway. Um, and I guess we can finish up on this as a, as a sentiment. Mm-hmm. Yep. Is a, it's, it's, it's a form of jazz. It's a form of jazz, which I feel like people like you, people younger, people older, they recognize the legacy and the history of individuals. Do you know what I mean? Like mm, okay. what Click the Super Latin did, what Dougie Fresh did, what Razel did, yep. what Scratch did, what Eclipse did, what Keller did, what Tom Thumb did. What all these, you know, ballsy, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's super important, you know. Um mm. if if I, I've I've got complete confidence that in twenty years' time people will know who Bellatrix is. They'll know who um River is. You know what I mean? They'll they'll know who oh, the, the the it's almost like timeless. Do you know mm. what I'm saying? 
Yeah, we got a lot of uh, respect for uh, what you guys did for us. And, um, and uh, I mean, yeah, I'm just throwing def- UK ones out, but you know what I'm saying? It's like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Uh, I would have thrown only French ones probably. So, yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we we no, can but... indulge. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but uh, you, know. you know, yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, super important. That's what makes uh, us, uh, you know, the the more uh, hip hop of the of the fifth uh, where the in the fifth elements of hip hop i think we're the one that still has this uh hip hop approach and i mean like uh, you know everyone knows who are the ogs everyone uh, just chills together uh there are still no um not that much money in beatboxing in fact you know so uh, not uh, I mean, when a guy when a guy goes to to a beatbox battle, he doesn't do it. He doesn't do that to win a cash prize. Definitely no. not, because they're the. He's just gonna go because he freaking loves beatboxing and because mm. he uh, he wants to uh, he wants to chill and he wants to you know, and that's Man. not that evident. I thought that was evident, you know, because uh, I'm really like this. I don't care that much about money. I don't care that much about uh, you know, and. Uh, I just went, you know, for passion and for music, but, uh, mm. and, uh, and, uh, I realized that, uh, a lot of the beatboxers, uh, definitely, definitely the, the beatboxing is the beatboxing is like this, you know, everyone mm. is coming together and, uh, it's really a uh, sane, you know, mm. and, uh, that's what I wanted to say. It's for really, real, right? uh, it's so, it's so cool, you know, to, you, you can chill with, uh, with uh, your favorite artists, uh, you can, uh, and they're gonna, they're gonna um, uh, consider you uh, directly. You know, they're not gonna go like, "Oh, you're a beginner, go go train uh, or something." You know, they're just yeah. gonna, you know, accept you directly, and uh, and that's how it's gonna work uh, all the time. Yeah. I, I I hope definitely because that's what's make beatboxing so special. Uh, at the end of the day, yeah, and. Uh, the beatboxing, beatbox is is awesome, man. Beatbox is so cool. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's it's uh, power in numbers, mm-hmm. and when there's no money involved, it makes a scene dangerous and mm-hmm. uncontrollable. Because yep. money controls shit. But if you've yep. got like people over over money, then you've got power, and yep. that's what that's what keeps the scene mm. angry, happy, and free. We have to keep that. Definitely. Yeah, I mean. River, <laughs> you're a fucking legend in the making. <laughs> Your legacy's already there. Killing it, my G. Uh, thank, thank you. you thank you so much. much for this time. That was really interesting. And uh, thank you for your time. And yeah. Number Big love, up, River, man. Thank you so yeah, much for being on the legend. show. Brother, I'm, I'm, I'm almost certain the people out there, old audiences are new, We'll appreciate the sentiment. Hi, right. um, big up to the audience. Yeah, for real. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast strikes again with pure vengeance and nothing but love for the scene that created me. Enough respect <laughs> to River. Killer Keller podcast, we all are in, was out of fashion. Don't forget to share and subscribe. Big shout out, Graffiti Kings. Peace.